Hi, I'm Hazel and these are my top 10 tips for a new Mercy player in Overwatch. Whether you're looking to branch out to more roles in the game or you're brand new to Overwatch in general, hopefully you pick up something here to help you carry your team to victory. Number 10, the Mercy Beam Toggle. Go to Options, then Controls, then pick Mercy from the dropdown to make it character specific. By default, the beam toggle is off and I firmly believe that everyone should play with this on. What this does is instead of holding down your mouse buttons to channel your heal and damage beams, you click the beam to toggle it on. It'll keep channeling until you either switch beams, switch targets, change weapons, or break line of sight. Turning this option on was life-changing and if for some reason you haven't done it yet, just go do it. My healing numbers went up by an average of at least a thousand per game without even really playing differently. Also, your crampy fingers will thank you. Number 9. Guardian Angel Prefers Beam Target Option This one is a little less cut and dry than the beam toggle because there's benefits to having it both ways. If you turn this option on, your Guardian Angel Shift Boost will always send you to the player that you're currently channeling your heal beam on, even if you aren't looking at them or targeting them. That can be really good to fly away in one direction while looking or even shooting the opposite way. Having it off, which is the way I personally prefer it, means that Guardian Angel will send you to the character you're targeting even if you're healing someone else. I really like this because I can be healing the Roadhog that's dying on the payload while looking at our Widowmaker across the room for a quick getaway if I need it. You'll keep healing the guy you left behind as you fly away, and especially if you're using the beam toggle, this means that you don't have to get close enough to channel your beam on someone or stop the beam altogether in order to fly away. I personally always play with this option off, but I recommend you try it out both ways. Different people will do better with it either way, and it's important that you figure out what works for you. Number 8. A Lonely Mercy is a Dead Mercy Mercy has incredible mobility, but she can use absolutely none of it if she's not near her team. This means that if your team is wiping and you don't have a res, you're often better off pulling back to your teammates as they run back, rather than trying to do anything by yourself. On Mercy in particular, it's important to die as little as possible, and without teammates to help you fly around to fight, you aren't going to get much done. The one exception to the finding your team rule would be in overtime. If you need to go jump on the point to reset the timer, then that's what you gotta do. You'll probably die on the point, but at least you gave your teammates an extra 10 seconds to pull some serious MLG moves out of their butt before you lost the round. Number 7. Backup Unless it's a trusted Reinhardt with a big rectangle of love, there's no good reason to be all the way up somebody's butt. Your healing and buff beams have a longer range than you think, and you're much better off being a little ways back and behind cover. If somebody sneaks up behind you, you can just pop over to your heal target and hope they turn around and help. If people keep running out of your range, remember that you can cancel your Guardian Angel jump so you can hop halfway there and heal them up without jumping right into the death zone. Additionally, being less in the thick of things makes it easier to hide when the enemy starts ulting. Surviving that death from above, rip tire, graviton surge, death blossom combo means that you can hop back in when it's over for a quick res. Number 6. You can look around while healing or buffing people. Maybe this was super obvious, but it took me a little bit to figure out, and I still haven't gotten the hang of taking full advantage of this. Once you've locked your beam on the target, you're free to spin your character 360 degrees to look for an escape route, watch your flank, or wonder what it would be like to see Lucio live in concert. Awareness is the biggest thing you can work on to help you survive as Mercy, and that'll start the second you stop staring down your heal target. You already know he's getting wrecked, that's not news. Number 5. The beam connection maintains for a few seconds even after you leave range or break LOS. You can reset that time by peeking a quick look at your target, which means you barely have to be in line of them at all. Abuse the hell out of this by dancing behind a corner or some boxes to make yourself less of a target without ever dropping your beam. This is also nice when you're boosting between people, because you'll get a couple of extra seconds of healing on the guy that you're abandoning behind you. You never know what'll be enough to save a life. Number 4. Your blue beam boosts a friend's damage by exactly 30%, and you must have the beam active when the projectile lands for it to be buffed. This means that if you're trying to buff a Hanzo ult, you need to keep it on him until the dragon is totally done sailing to get the boost on it. Supposedly in the beta, they had an actual end card stat showing how much extra damage was done because of your boost, and it was so sad that people just stopped using the beam, so they took the stat out. The moral of the story is that if nobody's about to need your heal in the next two seconds, you're better off whipping out your gun and murdering people yourself than boosting the Hanzo who's firing randomly into the distance. The exception to this is ults. You can wreck teams by buffing an ulting Roadhog, Farah, Soldier 76, Hanzo, Genji, Reaper, Bastion, or even Winston. Don't bother with Junkrat, you can't affect rip tire damage, and it probably doesn't need your help anyways. Number 3. Your gun is better than you think. 
While we're on the topic of Mercy's gun, that thing is a low-key monster. It's really accurate, it does reasonable damage, and there's no drop-off so you can hit things that are freakishly far away pretty easily. This makes it decent for picking off turrets, popping a daydreaming sniper, or nailing the Reinhardt who decided to turn his back on you. The real power of the gun is that nobody expects it and people leave themselves open to it all the time at low to mid-level MMR. The other thing to know about the gun is that when you switch back to your staff for a few seconds, your gun will automatically reload in your pocket so you shouldn't be spending time reloading. Number 2. By default on PC, your mouse wheel will toggle between your weapons. I personally rebound my mouse wheel to jump so I could bunny hop a little easier, but you should have toggle weapon bound to something. You only have the two weapons, so using separate buttons to switch to each of them is just stupid. Make it something you can easily reach and get comfy with it. Surprise headshots are one of the most fun things you can do as Mercy, and you'll need something to keep you happy on your 30th hour of nobody else wanting to play support. Number 1. Mercy can jump to dead friends. After somebody dies and before they respawn, they exist as a little glowy bloop on the ground. You can totally guardian angel to their dead corpse, and that could be the most life-saving thing in a game. Let's say your whole team got May ulted and you crammed yourself under a bed three houses down the street. Once she's done, you need to get back into range fast for your play of the game 5-man res, and leaping to a body is the best way to do it. Just be careful you don't launch yourself into whatever danger killed the guy you're jumping to and you'll do great. And those are my tips for beginner mercies. I hope you found out something that'll help you on the battlefield as you go forth and get free commendation votes for being the only healer. Thanks for watching! Let me know what you think, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!